So, Mark and I want to talk about the importance of definitions in logical theory. Sure. Um, make a comment if you have one as we go. So, definition is very important when you're reasoning with someone. Because if you're reasoning with someone about, some, about something and you haven't defined your words precisely enough, people won't understand what you're talking about. And oftentimes, arguments are rather just semantic. I mean, you might have two people using the same word, but they're meaning different things. They could be arguing in different directions. They might actually be agreeing. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, philosophers really do see that they oftentimes need to begin a good discussion, getting clear on what you know, key words are. Particularly if you're talking about complicated things regarding religion, ethics. If I want to talk about the good life, I probably need to get clear on what I mean by good mm -hmm. before that conversation is going to go anywhere. Yes. And, uh, for instance, suppose I'm giving an argument about banks, and I, and I argue that banks are very slippery, mm -hmm. and uh, really all banks need to be done away with, and the government should fill them all in with concrete. And someone thinks that I'm talking about financial institutions, and they think I'm a communist or something, but maybe I'm only talking about the banks of rivers. Uh, the word bank is, is what we call an ambiguous word. It has more than one meaning. In different contexts, it can mean different things. In one context, the word bank might refer to the edge of a river. In another context, it might refer to a financial institution. So, if I'm reasoning about banks and my audience isn't sure whether I'm talking about river banks or money banks, mm -hmm. then there'll be a failure of communication to paraphrase the movie Cool Hand Luke, right? Yep. yep. So, so a definition is an explanation of the meaning of a word or phrase, and a precise definition is a detailed explanation of the meaning of a word or phrase. And when we reason, we need to define our terms or our audience won't know what we're, really won't know what we're talking about. And so, logical theory places a high importance on defining words and making our meanings as clear as possible. Um, so there are two things that we try to do away with or uh, reduce when we develop a, a definition of a word. We try to remove or reduce ambiguity. Ambiguity occurs when a word has two or more meanings and it's not clear which meaning is intended. Mm -hmm. And we also, with the definition, are trying to do away with or reduce um, uh, my mind just went blank. Uh, oh, vagueness. Mm -hmm. My mind, it's funny, my <laughs> mind went vague. I was listening to the ducks, uh, the ducks. and made my mind wander. We're <coughs> trying to do away or, or eliminate or, or reduce at least vagueness. Mm -hmm. A word is vague if it Cases, where a borderline case is a situation where we're not sure whether or not the word actually applies. So, for instance, the word poor. There would be cases where we're not sure if the word poor applies or not. Uh, is a student who makes $20,000 a year poor? Um, is a student who makes $10,000 a year poor? And usually with vague words, we have a general idea what the word would mean, but we really just don't understand it in that specific context. It's just yeah. kind of slippery. Whereas an amb ambiguous word will have two or more very clear meanings, uh, like the bank. Two clear meanings, river bank, financial institution. There's no vagueness there. There's no ambiguity. But two different meanings, we don't know which one. The word's vague if we have a general idea like tall. Or yeah. something's big. I have a pet that is big. Well, the word big is incredibly vague. In terms of mice, something that big would be big. Uh, in terms of elephants, that would be a pretty small elephant. The big is usually going to be a, like a vague term in most yeah. contexts. Yeah, so ambiguity does not involve vagueness. Ambiguity is uh, a completely different concept from vagueness. But yes, um, in a, when a word is vague, we have a general idea of what the word means, but there are cases where we're not sure if the word applies or not. Rich is an, a good example, too. Rich and poor are both vague words. There are cases where we're not sure if we'd want to call the person rich. Right. Someone, if someone is someone rich who makes 200000 a year, uh, I'm, I don't know if we have a definite sense on that. But is someone rich who's worth $100 billion? Certainly so. 
So um, there are borderline cases for a word like rich, and then there are clear-cut cases where we, we're pretty sure the word applies. But a, a word is vague when it has borderline cases. A word is ambiguous when it has two or more meanings. So the purpose of definition usually is to reduce or remove ambiguity and, and vagueness so that we know exactly what we're talking about. And usually to convey meaning, to provide some cognitive insight as to what the person is meaning by the word as yes. specifically as possible. And that's what happens when we remove vagueness yeah. and ambiguity. So the, the material you have on definition is important. Read it. Uh, look at the examples. Just a couple points to make on this, and uh, there's more details in the course materials and or the text, but there are two different types of definitions, two general broad types. An extensional definition of a word or a phrase or a term uh, defines the word or phrase by listing uh, things that the word or phrase applies to. So an extensional definition of the word car might list Chevrolets, uh, Fords, Toyotas, Kias, and so forth. That would be an extensional definition, a list of things that the word applies to. An intentional definition is very different. An intentional definition of a word or a phrase is a list of the attributes that something must have in order to be in the extension of the word or phrase. So the extension of a word or a phrase is the thing that the word applies to, the things that the word applies to, and the intention of a word or a phrase would be the attributes that something would have to have to fall into the extension of the word or phrase. So an intentional definition is going to involve concepts, attributes or properties that something would have to have to be in the extension. An extensional definition is a list of things. So let's uh, let's see. Maybe I can. Where did Mark go? How about the word tree? Okay. Can you? I'll go over here. Can you give a definition of the word tree? Well, would you like an intentional definition or an extensional definition? Well, let's let's try an extensional definition. An example of an extensional definition would be for me to nod my head at this thing I'm behind, kind of directing your attention to this thing. It's a tree. They'd be giving an example of a tree. I could uh, name a bunch of kinds of trees, elms, pines, uh, redwoods, uh, yews. Those would be uh, examples uh, of the kinds of things that belong in a class of trees. Yeah. Uh, I could provide for, I could attempt an intentional definition. But if I gave an intentional definition, this would be tougher. I would need to provide the character traits that are true of all the trees. Uh, so I might say something like a, a woody plant with a trunk of six foot, you know, at a mature it's six feet or greater. Now, I'm not saying that's an accurate definition, but uh, I'm attempting to provide the character traits of a tree. That something has to have to be a tree, to be right. in the extension of trees. Yes. Yeah. And uh, are, are there other trees here you could maybe well, put in the extension? I could, if I, my eyeballs could do it, I could point to all kinds of trees around here. Any of the trees I could point to or alert you to would be part of the extension of trees. A complete extensional definition would point to every single tree in the universe. So I'm just giving you a partial extensional definition right now, uh, drawing uh, attention to specific trees. How about a definition of a duck? a duck? Well, there are a lot of ducks around here. Uh, so an extensional definition of a duck I would draw your attention to various ducks. I could draw a picture of a duck and point to it. I could point to ducks so, walking about. A whole bunch of ducks over there. Okay, you just... There's six members of the extension of the term ducks okay. in the water right there. So as you just simply are pointing to examples of ducks, you're providing an extensional definition. An intentional definition of a duck would provide all the character traits of a duck. And I would defer maybe to a duck expert on this, but something like an intentional definition of a duck, uh, a bird, Animal with feathers, a bird that swims and flies and goes quack, quack. Well, that's a ridiculous definition, I know, but it's an attempt at an intentional definition. So, in other words, what you're saying is if it walks like a duck, duck. quacks it walks like, like a, a duck, duck it's and my looks, definition. And looks like a duck. A duck. <laughs> I know you're not really saying <laughs> But, okay. So, so, this was designed to get you into the material on definitions and hopefully to spark your interest in it. And uh, anything else, Mark? Quack, quack.
Thank you.